South Korea has ambitious plans to be the fourth largest weapons exporter by 2027 after the United States, Russia and France. The government's plans to be the largest weapons exporter by 2027 in recent years, South Korea has edged out stiff competition from Western defense manufacturers and cheaper Chinese developers, with both attractive pricing and faster delivery times. Korea has lots of weapons and has a potential to deliver it very quickly. So how did South Korea become one of the world's biggest arms dealers? And could it even eclipse the likes of China and Germany? Between 2010 and 2017, Seoul more than tripled its total defense exports to $3.1 billion. In 2017 alone, 132 companies in South Korea were exporting arms to 83 countries. Since then, it's expanded its sales footprint beyond Asia to include Europe and South America. This is the former Republic of Korea, Seoul, a decommissioned frigate that has defended South Korea seas for three decades. A modified version of the ship is currently used by the Bangladesh Navy, and there are many other countries that have South Korean military hardware in service. From 2018 to 2022, the East Asian nation was the ninth largest weapons supplier globally, ahead of Israel, the Netherlands, and Turkey. Today, the biggest South Korean defense companies include Hanwha, Korea Aerospace Industries, LIG Nix One, and Hyundai Rotem. Their products, which include tanks and planes, are on display at ADEX, the country's largest defense exhibition. Many major customers of South Korea's defense equipment have a significant presence here. We've got dedicated pavilions from the United States, Europe, and Poland as well. Following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Poland, a neighbor of Ukraine and Russian ally Belarus, signed a multi-billion dollar arms deal in August 2022 with Korean companies to supply equipment that includes rocket launchers, tanks and fighter jets. South Korea has become Poland's second largest partner after the US in arms imports. It was essential for Poland in this very critical security circumstances surrounded my country. The Republic of Korea's armaments industry continues to cooperate with the U.S., which translates into compatibility with NATO standards. It's very important for Poland as a NATO member country. This compliance with NATO means that these munitions and equipment meet common standards, allowing them to be used within the alliance. It took slightly more than three months for the first shipment to arrive in what is South Korea's biggest ever arms deal. In 2018, Hungary ordered 44 Leopard tanks from Germany, and so far only one tank has been delivered five years after the signing the deal. So I think in comparison to the potential of European defense industry, the position of South Korean defense industry is quite strength. But the growth of South Korea's defense industry was born out of necessity following the tragic war it fought against the North between 1950 and 1953. There has been the long history of uh, the military tension and conflict between North Korea. And that's why we kept our production line. We kept investing R&D. So from the conventional weapon system, we add more value with the high technology. The war, which claimed millions of lives, saw the South Koreans initially overwhelmed by troops from the Communist North, which was trained and supplied by China and Russia. The United States, under a United Nations mandate, came to the aid of the South Koreans, and an alliance was forged between both countries in 1953 as the war drew to a close. However, both South Korea and North Korea are technically still at war, since no peace treaty was signed. In the years since, the scars of the war and periodic conflicts continue to haunt South Koreans today. This patrol boat that I'm on belongs to the same class of ships that was involved in skirmishes as recent as 2002. It was only in the 1970s when South Korea started to develop its domestic defense industry with urgency. 
there were two events leading up to it, provocations by the North in 1968 and the reduction of U.S. troops in the country in 1971. The country was undergoing rapid economic growth during that period, referred to as the miracle on the Han River. While the military benefited from the boom, its fledgling defense industry was still dependent on foreign technology. South Korean defense industry has developed since the 1970s under several indigenous programs to increase the competitiveness of heavy industries like shipbuilding industries and to localize basic uh, defense products like machine guns, artillery, tanks, and so on. In 2018, the 12th president of South Korea, Moon Jae-in, launched one such modernization program known as Defense Reform 2.0. One of its aims is to reduce its reliance on foreign defense technology while building its domestic defense ecosystem, from technology to production lines. South Korea's competitiveness in its defense industry actually comes from a few important and uh, attractive distinctive factors, which are first, fast delivery timeline, and second, manufacturing efficiency and prowess, third, strong governmental willingness to support defense contractors. Korean defense products are known to be very cost efficient compared to other competing solutions. And considering the cost effectiveness, uh, it's still performs very well in terms of capabilities and uh, firepower. And secondly, major Korean defense companies react very promptly to customers' feedback. We have a resilient logistic support system. Our customers, they are satisfied with our after-sale support. Defense deals are ultimately reliant on the government of the day, which could change as political winds shift. There are fears that a new government in Poland could put the brakes on negotiations for a second defense deal between the two countries. There's also pressure for technology transfers to create jobs and boost domestic production capabilities. As a new entrant to the global defense market, we try to team with other foreign the global businesses, cooperating with the, the local suppliers. We try to contribute to the development of their industries and economy as well. For example, we set up the facility there, thereby creating more jobs and contribute to the development of the R&D and technology. Luckily, uh, the Korean government is very supportive. But are these enough to give its defense industry an edge? Other countries with well-established defense industries are looking to challenge South Korea for defense contracts. France is already very well positioned as an attractive exporter of uh, credible weapon systems. Also, if Turkish defense industry's capabilities rise with another price competitiveness and credible technology, which are uh, currently South Korea's market advantages, then these two countries could be major concerns for South Korea. But for now, demand for weapons is growing in the face of wars in Ukraine and the Middle East. In July 2023, Hanwha edged Germany's Rhine medal to snag a $4.7 billion Australian contract for 129 Redback Infantry fighting vehicles. It is one of many deals that have demonstrated the competitiveness of South Korea's military hardware on the global stage, and the country has its sights on other markets such as the Middle East. After uh, we won the bid for Redback in Australia, the lots of countries in Eastern Europe, they show a keen interest in our the next generation infantry fighting vehicle. Establishing cooperation with South Korea is also part of Poland's plans to modernize its armed forces, especially the long postponed need to replace post-Soviet equipment and to increase the size of the Polish army and to develop the potential of the domestic defense industry in cooperation with uh, foreign partners. If this current pace of defense exports continues until 2027, then uh, I think it's a very positive sign that South Korea could be one of the top four uh, defense exporters in 2027.